Back on this Sunday morning on Inside Tennessee with Amelia Parker and Lynn Fugit, two new members of Knoxville City Council. Susan? Well, um, Lynn, you've served before on the school board. Amelia, you're new. What, what will be your priorities? John mentioned that, but I would love to see if there is something specific that you would like to accomplish, either in the district where you live or overall on the board. So you I'll start with first? Amelia. Sure. Maybe. Well, I have an easy one. Um, of course, there's a lot of issues that I know resonated with voters um, who elected me. But first, at the top of the list, is trying to resolve this tiebreaker situation. Um, looking at our charter to see if it is a change that requires a ballot initiative, it may be so. Um, and coming up with the language that we can present to the voters so we can uh, prevent a situation like that in the future. A coin flip, as Don mentioned. Right. What do you think is the fair way right. to decide that? Well, you know, putting that decision back in the hands of the voters. Mm -hmm. um, the issue is the timing. Mm -hmm. You know, if that happens during a primary election, like happened right. in my situation, there's another general election coming up, and so there's timing issues. Need to get the military ballots out in time. Um, so those are the things that would. I will be looking and, through and you know, and, and sort of looking at it objectively, though, the, the chances of a dead tie again, right. statistically, <laughs> pretty low. But I think you're exactly right, and I think you've identified the problem is that if you have to have sort of an emergency runoff election, how do you accomplish it right. between the general and the primary? Yep. So. Exactly. Lynn, how about your priorities to Susan's question? Well, I don't have anything that specific, <laughs> yeah. um, um, but I think generally my priority is just to make sure that we have good governance, that we look at everything that makes a city important. I think um, <coughs> in this in this cycle, we heard lots of different things. We, ta we talked about home ownership, we talked about homelessness, we talked about economic development, we talked about all those issues. And I think when you're a member of council, they all have to be dealt with and um, thoughtfully and in a way that works together. Um, and so I think that's my priority, is to make sure that we have more of a strategic vision for the city and look at how all those pieces play a part. Lynn, you've worked with our incoming mayor before yes, through the school board. So I'm curious to uh, how you think that transition is going to work now with Mayor Kincannon and, and you now on city council. You're the one with uh, one of the few with real legislative experience with her. And so I'm curious to your thoughts about that. Well, I'm glad that we have a great personal relationship and and we've talked about that as a matter of fact I saw her the other day and I said I need to get on your calendar but as mayor I want to do it the right way and not just text you like mm -hmm. I normally would have so you know understanding and honoring that the office that she's in and understanding that she's mayor and that I have a role she has a role um, but I think relationship is the key to everything right. in government and in, and in life and if you like people and get along with people and trust people and understand their perspectives, you always come to better decisions. And she and I have that with each other, and I look forward to that. Amelia, have you had a chance to spend some time with Mayor Kincannon, or Mayor-elect Kincannon still as we sit here, I assume? Mm -hmm. So yes. uh, have you had a chance to get to know her and, and, and see sort of where you have some uh, agreement and things you want to work on together? We have had um, a little bit of time, not as much. Uh, uh, as we will have coming up. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but she was one of the first people I met with before I decided to run again um, because she was launching her campaign for mayor. Um, and I knew that there would be a lot of overlap in the issues that we were lifting up during our campaigns. Um, so I wanted to meet with her. And um, I've had a chance to talk with her, you know, um, a, a little bit over the last few weeks since the election and look forward to meeting with her further. As Lynn mentioned, social justice was a big part of the conversation from all mm -hmm. the candidates that we talked to, uh, you included Amelia, and in looking at the affordable housing situation in Knoxville, we talked about priorities, is that another of yours? Oh, absolutely. And what do you think can be done in that uh, arena to help more people find affordable living? Well, I, you know, I think uh, one thing I would like to see and, and uh, um, participate in more discussions now that I'm on council is um, uh, uh, and you know it's it's unfortunate Janet Testerman is not here because I'm about to use some of her language but <laughs> you know that overall strategic plan yes. for our city um, 
that acknowledges <coughs> the growth that's happening, some new projects that are coming in. Um, we have a, you know, federally designated opportunity zones mm -hmm. that are starting to attract new investments and will only attract more and more. And so making sure that we're planning um, and, and you know, conserving our, our housing stock that we can for affordable housing um, as we're, you know, as a lot of housing is now turning market rate. What about homelessness? That's something that everybody discussed as well, and there's been some attention paid mm -hmm. to that. Do you like what's happened so far, or do you have a different uh, perspective on it now that you'll be on council? Is there anything you would like to see done in addition to what this past mayor has done? Uh, Lynn, I'll start well, with you. Well, I don't know how it's looking for, to me. Um, I think it all ties into, we keep saying the same thing about this plan. I think in the absence of a plan, we are piecemealing such solutions in our community. I think there's been some good work done on homelessness, but it is a bigger issue than just being homeless. It is mental health. Mental health. It is substance, substance abuse. not entirely, not entirely, but those are factors, and so, and that also affects law enforcement. So, how do we, as a city, look at that holistically? Um, because I think once you have a plan, it makes decision making so much easier. So, when would you support a living wage greater than the the minimum wage that currently is in this town? Because clearly, that's one of the things when you have folks out there working two jobs, supporting a child and they still can't pay their rent because they're making minimum wage or near it. Would you support a significant increase as a city ordinance for a minimum wage raise? Well, can I jump in? Yes, Absolutely. jump in. Um, because I just want to say, you know, we're, we're prevented by state law from passing uh, or increasing our minimum wage by city ordinance. Um, but I do want to, you know, have some conversations. We've talked about the pay for KPD and how can we, you know, improve it. And let's look across our city workers and see how we can improve pay because mm -hmm. that can give incentive to businesses in our community coming to our community to, you know, pay a higher wage than the minimum federal. Right. Wage. And you're right because about the city ordinance, but you can put pressure on state legislature to do those and, things. And we'll get, I want, I want okay. you to weigh in on this. We've just got to take a quick break, All but right. back with your answer right after this on Inside Tennessee.